This is the Yamaha DGX670 and in this video, I'm going to review it by going through the build quality, key action, the piano features, the arranger functionality, the things Yamaha got right and the stuff Yamaha compromised to get the DGX670 to this price point. Do watch till the end if you want to know if the Yamaha DGX670 is a good fit for your musical needs. Steve Jobs famously said, if you don't cannibalize yourself, someone else will. And this is what Yamaha has done with their DGX670, essentially cannibalizing their own P125 digital piano and PSR SX600 arranger keyboard and making them poor value choices right now. Owners of the P125 and SX600 will undoubtedly crucify me in the comment section, but hey, I'm here to dispense hard truths in a bitter pill. The Yamaha DJX Portable Grand had always been the awkward child in the family starting from the very first DJX200 launched more than 18 years ago in 2002. The DJX line is Yamaha's attempt to create a hybrid from an 88 keys digital piano amalgamated with the features from the PSR series keyboards. Unfortunately, previous DJX were pretty much plasticky entry-level digital pianos cobbled together with low-end PSR keyboard features. Yamaha's slick marketing, however, ensured they sold loads of these overpriced DJX keyboards to many unsuspecting customers. The Yamaha DJX670, on the contrary, is quite a different beast. It moves to a different heartbeat from its predecessor. This digital piano isn't an evolution of the previous DJX, it is revolutionary. Yamaha isn't afraid to slaughter their sacred cows with the DJX670. In fact, I will be bold and predict that the DJX670 has moved the needle so much that I doubt any of the big competing brands such as Cork, Casio or Roland will have in the next few years any chance at all of coming up with a better product in this category and at this price. Yes, that's how good an all-rounder digital piano arranger keyboard the Yamaha DJX670 is considering the price. <laughs> I have links to more information and current prices in the description below if you would like to scrutinize the Yamaha DJX670 further and prove me wrong. For owners of previous Yamaha DJX keyboards, the first thing that strikes you is how much the overall build quality has improved. Previous DJX pianos had cheap plastics everywhere. It felt and looked like Yamaha's entry-level PSR E-Series keyboards but the DJX670 looks and feels significantly more premium and closer to the build quality of Yamaha's flagship SX keyboards. The buttons don't wobble, are logically laid out and made from a nice anti-slip rubberized material.
The 4.3 inch LCD screen taken from the PSR SX600 is small compared to the size of this keyboard, but it is bright, high in resolution, and thoughtfully laid out. Even the color palette used in the OS isn't gratuitous but is purposeful. The black on black color scheme gives a more professional look to this keyboard compared to its predecessors. The DJX 670 wouldn't look out of place on stage with its new livery. It is after all marketed as a portable grand. But at a staggering 47 pounds, the portable grand moniker is a misnomer. I doubt anyone will bring this anywhere and risk a herniated disc. I have a dozen students who had the previous DGX and no one ever moved it beyond their homes. They would rather spend $200 for a cheap PSR keyboard to gig with rather than pay for multiple chiropractic visits moving their Yamaha DGX Portable Grand around. While other brands seem to be competing to remove as many buttons as they can from their digital pianos, Yamaha has done a commendable job giving us multiple ways to maneuver around the operating system. The two rows of buttons below the LCD screen, a four-way D-pad and a data wheel makes me not miss having a touchscreen found on the SX keyboards. I am actually starting to prefer this tactile experience better than the touchscreen on my PSR SX900. Yamaha has clearly done UI studies to get the DJX 670 to be the most user-friendly 88 key arranger right now in the market. I hated the cheap grey toy looking plastic pedals on the previous DJX. Thankfully, the 670 now sports the more sophisticated looking triple pedals used on their significantly more expensive P515 digital pianos. Previously, Yamaha rummaged through their parts bin and used the music rests from their entry level PSR keyboards on the DGX. Those music rests simply cannot support the weight of thick classical music books. I have countless students who broke the music rest of their DJX within months of getting it. The DJX 670 has an improved music rest which is more robust and can better support the weight of thicker piano books. Yamaha has given the new DJX 670 a nip and tuck, creating soft swooping curves which successfully hide how portly this keyboard actually is. While one man's meat is another man's poison, I do love the new curves. To achieve this affordable price, one area that Yamaha compromised are the speakers. Yamaha didn't improve the speakers on the DJX 670 from its predecessors and this piano still sports the exact same 4 speaker system powered by an anemic pair of 6 watts amplifiers used on previous models. These speakers do their job as monitor speakers but they are just way underpowered if you intend to use your DJX 670 outside of your home. Such low amplification doesn't do justice to the virtual resonance modeling and super articulation technology in this digital piano. Therefore, it is no surprise the DJX 670 sounds significantly better with a pair of good headphones versus the onboard speakers. You can find out what headphones I use and recommend with my keyboards in the description below. <music> The Yamaha DJX 670 is a hybrid of three Yamaha instruments in one package. You get the GHS key action from the Yamaha P125 portable digital piano, the advanced arranger features, 
UI and screen of the Yamaha PSR SX600 keyboard as well as the piano room feature and CFX piano sample from Yamaha Clavinovas. Buying all these three instruments will cost you at least $5,000, but with the DJX 670, you get the headline features of these three instruments for just a couple of hundred dollars. The GHS key action on the DJX 670, inherited from Yamaha's P125, is almost two decades old, and the previous DJX also used this same action. While it isn't bad, especially on the DJX 670, which has such a ridiculously low price, it does feel dated when compared to the competitors featuring key escapement and triple sensors. The difference is even more pronounced if you have played on the newer GH3X, NWX, and Grand Touch keys found on current Yamaha Clavinovas. Here's my advice. You are missing the point of this DJX digital piano if you buy it purely for its key action. Yamaha's piano room feature found on their more expensive Clavinovas is quite a sight to behold, especially on a color screen. I suspect Yamaha didn't want to cannibalize the sales of their CVP Clavinovas by giving the previous DJX a piano room featuring a high resolution color screen. But now, the Yamaha DJX 670 is your lowest priced ticket to this coveted piano room. While the previous DJX had a piano room function, the low resolution dot matrix monochrome screen looks like it's taken from a 1980s Game Boy device. With the piano room, you get to isolate yourself from all distractions of the other features on the DJX 670 and use it purely for solo piano playing. You get six instruments in the piano room where you can visually configure the reverb, lid position, tone, tuning, and VRM parameters such as string and damper resonance. While digital pianos from the competition have similar features accessible via a mobile app, Yamaha's highly visual piano room is miles ahead of the competition when it comes to UI design. On the Yamaha CLP and CSP Clavinovas, which don't have big color screens, this visual feature is only available via an iPad. In my opinion, the inbuilt color screen on the DJX 670 is a much better experience than the hassle of connecting Yamaha's CLP and CSP Clavinovas to an iPad. I love it that we are getting the piano room experience from Yamaha's highest range of CVP Clavinovas that cost up to $15,000 in a DGX 670, which costs just a few hundred dollars. <laughs> The DJX 670 now sports the piano sample from Yamaha's 9-foot CFX Concert Grand that costs more than $150,000. This is a significant upgrade from the previous DGX. Note Polyphony has also received a 30% bump up to 256 notes. This is important as VRM voices eat up Note Polyphony as quickly as my hungry kids polish off their food at the dinner table. Coupled with the rich and lush styles on the DJX, the increased note polyphony is absolutely necessary. I highly recommend that you must get the optional triple pedal system in order to truly make use of the soft sostenuto and damper functions of this excellent piano room functionality. But getting the triple pedal system raises another issue, which I will elaborate later in this video. If you want more information on this triple pedal system, check out the link in the description below.
The DJX series is the only 88 weighted keys arranger in Yamaha's lineup. Even Yamaha's own $5,000 flagship Genos have to make do with 76 synth action keys. In previous DGX, the arranger feature always played second fiddle. For fear of cannibalizing their higher priced Genos S and SX range of arranger keyboards, Yamaha only put in basic arranger features from their entry-level PSR keyboard onto the previous DGX. However, Yamaha wasn't about to rest on their laurels. With Korg's XE20 and Casio's PXS3000 nipping at their heels, both are 88 keys graded hammer action arrangers. I have to take my hat off to Yamaha with the DGX 670. Not only did they cram 263 styles into this digital piano, Yamaha has given this DGX 670 features not even found on keyboards costing five times more. Music from arranger keyboards have a tendency to sound repetitive as the rhythm accompaniment tends to go on a continuous loop. With the new adaptive style found only on the DGX 670, you get as many as 13 different variations for each style rather than the traditional four variations per style on other keyboards. Depending on how hard you hit the keys, the keyboard will dynamically adapt the styles to your playing. Genos and PSR SX owners should pray that Yamaha will enable this feature on their expensive keyboards in a future firmware update. Coupled with the unison and accent feature, playing on an arranger keyboard no longer sounds repetitive an issue that plagues every competing arranger keyboard. You may want to note that not all the 263 styles work with these innovative features. Only specially programmed styles marked with adaptive, unison, and accent will work with these features. Yamaha has introduced a simple button that lets you quickly cut out all accompanying instruments except for the drums and bass a feature I often use when I need my piano playing to stand out. This one-button solution isn't available on Yamaha's other keyboards but can be achieved with some programming. Just by looking at the panel of the keyboard, one will see just one intro and ending button on the DJX 670 and accuse Yamaha of removing the multiple style intros and endings. Fret not, you get three intros and endings with this digital piano just like on Yamaha's higher end keyboards. This is one of the compromises at this price. You just have to go into the menu to assign the corresponding intro and ending to the buttons. For those of you new to playing with styles and rhythm accompaniment and want to learn how to play a ranger style keyboards, do check out my beginner keyboard course at jeremyc.com. The more advanced arranger players out there can pop their champagne. You get a style editor and creator on the DJX 670. This is your lowest priced Yamaha keyboard right now that has this feature. If the 263 onboard styles isn't enough for you, you can add it and create infinitely more. Although, in my opinion, you cannot really create good sounding styles without Yamaha's closely guarded stylist plugin, which Yamaha's in house programmers use to create and edit styles. <laughs> this price, the competition has a tendency to make their specifications look good by cramming loads of questionable quality legacy sounds into their keyboards. Yamaha has instead stepped up to the plate and included more than 600 voices into the DJX 670, many of which are their flagship high quality and expressive VRM and super articulation voices found only on their expensive keyboards. In my opinion, Yamaha's harpsichord, saxophone, and guitars are one of the best in the industry 
when coupled with the super articulation technology. While all these sounds can be layered and split, the compromise at this price is you can only layer two voices instead of three. Yamaha included many high quality DSP effects in the DJX670. These effects can be configured with an intuitive graphical interface and the only limit to your sonic palette is your creativity. This is a stark contrast to the competition where you will almost nearly need a PhD to figure out how to edit tones and styles. This piano is so user friendly, I didn't once refer to the manual from the day my DJX 670 was delivered. The previous DJX could only save 32 user registration presets. That was a huge limiting factor if one is trying to build up a repertoire. With all the voice, effects, and style configurability of the DJX 670, thankfully Yamaha now gives you an unlimited number of user registration banks. Although you can only save 4 presets in each bank compared to 8 on the SX keyboards, the registration sequence feature, if you know how to use, is very powerful. Allowing you to daisy chain and use an unlimited number of registrations in a song. In addition, Yamaha Playlists is a great feature for organizing your gig list when you perform. You know the DJX 670 is built to be a home entertainment instrument when you get a microphone input and a color screen with the ability to display lyrics. In fact, I got a Yamaha microphone for free when I bought my DJX 670. Make sure you get a dynamic microphone compatible with a quarter inch jack or it will not work. The DJX isn't meant for a professional setup with XLR phantom powered condenser mics. Instead, it is a quick and easy way for you to play, sing along and record the entire performance onto a USB stick. You can also use the USB connection to transmit digital audio directly into your DAW for further post-processing without the need for an external audio interface. The DJX 670 comes with many microphone effects that you can sweeten your vocals with. You can even save different microphone setups for different family members to ensure everyone sounds their best. While there isn't a vocal harmonizer as found on the higher-end Genos and SX keyboards, this is to be expected at this price. To find out the available bundles you can get with your Yamaha DJX 670, do check out the links in the description Below. If you want to create a multi-track, highly orchestrated music recording, a 16-track sequencer and a color LCD screen on the DJX makes the process way simpler than the competition that are still using low-resolution monochrome dot matrix LCD screens. I cannot tell you how much I love the triple pedal system, which unfortunately must be attached to the wooden furniture stand. You also get an additional pedal input with the DJX 670, giving you a total of 4 pedals, which is even more than Yamaha's $5,000 Genos. I can already imagine Genos owners watching this video giving it a thumbs down, but you can help me out by smashing the like button. These four completely configurable pedals are a godsend when both of your hands are busy. When used with piano voices, the triple pedal serves as soft, sustenuto, and damper function. But these pedals really truly shine only when you configure them 
to trigger more than 40 different functions on the DGX. In fact, from a performance point of view, I personally actually prefer the DJX 670 to my PSR SX900 because the triple pedals already come pre-configured depending on the mode and voices you select. I am happy that Yamaha has equipped the DJX 670 with wireless Bluetooth connectivity. It is a far easier method to stream backing tracks to the keyboard for jamming along with rather than the aux in jack which this digital piano has and should really be standard on every keyboard. Here are some of the things that may be deal breakers for you. While Yamaha markets the DJX as a portable grand, you can tell that it isn't really meant for gigs and will almost never be carried around. You don't get proper quarter inch stereo outputs to connect to a PA system. The massive weights means you won't carry it anywhere outside of your home. There is no option for battery power and this digital piano is best tethered to the very useful gig friendly triple pedal system which cannot be used without the furniture style wooden stand. You also do not get a modulation wheel and any form of live control knobs. Instead, you will have to assign these functions to the pedals. Now for the million dollar question, is the DJX 670 a good digital piano for you? Here's my advice. If you primarily use this as a practice piano and have little interest in sounds beyond the various piano tones, the DJX 670 really isn't the best for you. It will be a waste of the onboard 600 tones and 263 styles that you pay for. If all you are after is a very good piano key action so you can play your VST piano libraries, the DJX 670 isn't for you. The GHS key action is pretty dated and has only dual sensors. There are better choices out there at this price. If you foresee yourself bringing the DJX 670 from home to perform in school or church regularly, this digital piano is way too heavy to do that. There are more portable digital pianos with more power options out there. It ain't worth getting a laminectomy over a digital piano. If you primarily use your keyboard as an arranger and don't play much piano only pieces, 88 keys are way too many for you. The higher end PSR SX have more sounds, more styles, more powerful speakers and they are way lighter, have live control knobs and wheels and have much better connectivity. You should buy the Yamaha DJX 670 if you fulfill a combination of these criteria. Number one, you intend to play solo piano pieces. Number two, you love dabbling and editing to get different sounds. Number three, you want to play with accompaniment and chords to give you that lush and rich sound. Number four, you are not shy and want to play, sing, record your songs and entertain your friends and family on a casual basis. Number five, you do not intend to move your DJX anywhere outside your home. Number six, you want the cheapest ticket to style creation and editing. Number seven, you don't mind an all-in-one competent jack of all trades but truly master of none digital piano. Number eight, you only want to spend a few hundred dollars to achieve all of the above. If what I just described sounds like you, head right down to the video description below to check out the latest prices and gift yourself a Yamaha DJX 670 right now.
that like button if you found my in-depth and personal review to be useful in your purchasing decision. My name is Jeremy C and I'll see you in my next video.